the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Cooperate on this wise, but um, it's, been, it's been a very humbling moment for me. Uh, now our final session together just seeing the love the warmth the sense of mutual honor these are the kinds of things that happen when God is at work in a place and God is at work in your island truly in the name of Jesus Christ before we pray I want to challenge us the message tonight is truly for the body of Christ first in the entire Borny Island, and then by extension, the body of Christ as far as the message can get. The only favor I will ask of you tonight is please make sure that you get this message you're about to hear to as many people who you know who love Jesus Christ across this island. I had the honor and the privilege of having a bit of a visitation to some of your historic sites and it was amazing to relieve history the things that we were told to now see it come to pass men and women who gave themselves for the gospel men and women who denied themselves so that Jesus would be lifted hallelujah now we're gathered tonight to hear the word of the Lord but also as extensions of this legacy and we must not let the gospel fail in our time. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for tonight? Father, give me an encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray. Give me an encounter. encounter that will change my life following online make sure you are praying give us encounters oh God hallelujah second prayer point father let there be a fresh wind of revival and awakening upon the bonny island once again raise people men and women that you will pour out your spirit upon in mighty ways is someone praying Once again, visit this land. Visit our families. Visit the youth. Visit the elderly. Let Jesus be lifted once again upon this island. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, help us tonight. Let there be such mighty outpouring of your spirit. Let there be miracle signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the rain of revival will fall upon this place.
do something that will bring the name of Jesus glory tonight father we pray that you meet every need in this place and let Jesus be glorified amen and amen God bless you again please be seated let me honor every servant of God here the men of God who pastor and lead this church thank you sirs the pastors servants of God men and women of God veterans of the gospel across this entire land we bless you we honor you we recognize what you are doing for the kingdom and we do not trivialize your sacrifices amen I have a calling and I have been sent primarily to the body of Christ. My assignment is to see to it that within the limit of the grace of God committed unto me that I'm able to supply the dimensions of grace and spiritual illumination that territories would require as far as loving Jesus, living for him, birthing revivals, transforming territories, and preserving legacies concerned. And so every time God gives me the privilege and the honor of traveling around, whether in this nation, across the African continent, or around the world, it remains my singular honor to see that I avail myself to be used by God in whatever capacity he would want to plant a fire that will burn and would outlive even those who came for that meeting. And when he grants me the unique honor of now visiting, ter visiting territories, not just churches or ministries, I take it as a bigger assignment because then I have the privilege of speaking to the entire body of Christ within that region. And I take it as a lifetime opportunity. Tonight is one of such times. In fact, the entire conference has been a moment in history. And I pray that it will not be forgotten in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. Adonai. You're the Lamb of God You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign in my heart Adonai this is our prayer that your kingdom will come and that it will reign in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Preserving territorial revivals. This is my teaching tonight. Preserving territorial revivals. Like I said earlier on, I had the opportunity to visit grave sites had the opportunity to visit century old monuments that remain upon your land as a testament that once upon a time there was a mighty move of God I had the honor of being given an orientation and a throwback relieving history from person after person how the gospel came to your region how the gospel went across the globe, how the gospel went across the nation of Africa and the entire Nigeria and the role that this very island played in sustaining that fire. Phenomenal. And so I thought by the Spirit of God that it would be good 
to contribute to that fan of revival fire by sharing with us the secrets I have learned through my encounters with the Holy Spirit, the secrets I have learned by gleaning on the wisdom of uncommon mentors, the secrets I have learned from men and women who have been used by God to fan the flames of revival across this nation, across Africa, and across the globe. In every generation and every once in a while through history, you would find out that individuals and territories would experience a massive move of the Spirit. There would be such times, we call them awakenings, when certain individuals from a territory would seem to be handpicked by God and God would move mightily and unusually through their lifetime. In Nigeria here, we have all kinds of people beginning from the fathers and patriarchs of faith, Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder of your regions here, James Johnson, Apostle Babalola, you name them, all through modern history. And then across the globe, you talk about men and women who have been mightily used by God. A few people have written about them. We call them God's generals. Almost every territory has men and women who at one point or the other, they experienced the power, the fire, the grace of God. And they moved in such dimensions that brought glory to the name of the Lord. Here's what the Bible says, that the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. But then the challenge with these moves of God is that strangely so, as powerful as they come, mighty miracles, the moves of God bringing spiritual awakenings, bringing industrial revolutions. A point comes when it looks like the succession system is not mastered. And when those people either pass on to glory or by reason of age and the depletion of strength, the move goes down and you would look at some of those regions and never believe that God once moved. The, we only have the monuments to convince us. Not the impact again, but the monuments. There are places across the globe today, across the Middle East, some of those places were the places where this scripture was written. And yet you go there today and you don't find anything that looks like God. If you are fortunate, you will meet gravestones. You would meet ancient inscriptions that may archaeologically convince you that an event like this happened. And if we do not learn what I'm about to teach tonight, may God forbid that Christ tarries. And then a time comes when we come to this island and cannot find anything God. May God forbid it that once upon a time or a time to come, we'll pass through this island and see that there's no revival, no awakening. God consciousness is empty. Someone shout no way. Are we together? Many moves of God have come and have gone. From the world's revival, the Azusa Street revival, the healing revival, the charismatic revival, they brought with them several dimensions of God. But for some reason, it seems like the potency of these revivals become lost because the system of preservation has not been studied. We have learned how to start revivals, but we have not learned how to sustain the impact. This is my assignment tonight, to show us a mystery that can leave revivals and cause their impact to be transgenerational. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. Two scriptures. Judges chapter 2. We're going to start our reading tonight with a very disturbing and very troubling rendition. Judges chapter 2 from verse 10. Judges chapter 2 from verse 10. Okay, we have it projected. Now pay attention please. I'm reading to 19. 
And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose, listen carefully, another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Next verse. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. We're reading to 19. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. We're still reading. And they forsook the Lord and saw Baal and Ashrod. These were ancient gods. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hand of their enemies round about. So that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. We're reading to 19. Whithsoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord has sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, hallelujah, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went, what's the word there? Warring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them and turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in. Take note, which their fathers walked in. Obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not do so. 18. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. The last scripture, 19. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the judge was dead what happened they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them and they cease not from their own doings nor from their own stubborn way this is a very tragic rendition that once upon a time the nation of israel saw the outstretched arm of god they had mighty visitations from the Lord. But then they went back into their ways of depravity. And God gave them to the hands of their enemies and they cried. And in his mercy, he raised judges for them. And whilst these judges were alive, they guided them in the way of the Lord. But notice there was one mistake with this scripture. All the judges and all the people had no succession system. So when those who were custodians of what God was doing, the moment they died, the people returned again to their captivity, their depravity, etc. The Bible clearly tells us in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests and we shall reign. It is his desire that we reign in life, serving the purposes of God and seeing to it that Christ is enthroned and Christ is glorified. Now, there are two things I want to teach you before we get into the discourse tonight. Please look up. The gospel has two sides. There are two sides to the gospel. The first side to the gospel is the message that saves. There is the gospel as the message that saves an individual. The message that saves. What is that message? A revelation of the love of the Father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation to the end that whosoever believes in that sacrifice there is a reward for believing that sacrifice it's actually the gift of god it's called the life of god eternal life we call it are we together so the message that reveals the love of the father through the sacrifice of jesus man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation our assignment is to believe that report and we receive eternal life to our spirits but the second side of the message or the gospel is an ideology that enthrones Christ across a territory and across society there is a dimension of the gospel that is not just for an individual edification a dimension of the gospel that should affect society should affect territories that means not only an individual should be saved territories as a whole should come under the influence of the government of the Christ for a very long time and for many years we did very well in the first area we help people through evangelism to receive this gift of God but we neglected our territories and so we had individuals who loved Jesus but the territory became harsh and hostile to these individuals because we did not sustain the intelligence to bring our territories under the corporate influence of the government of the Christ. The result, many of those people became discouraged. Some of them became backsliding Christians. And then when those who were the captains that spearheaded the move of God, now departed to be with the Lord, the influence of the territory became so strong that the personal convictions of the people dwindled. So you find pockets of Christians across a territory and yet that territory does not name the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? The message that saves individuals then an ideology that transforms territories. I commented on this yesterday. I'd like to repeat myself again. When I came into your territory from the NLNG and then all to other territories, I was amazed at the level of dexterity and culture and order and civility that surrounds your territory. Are we together? There seems to be a modus operandi that brings a sense of responsibility and order. I commend and I confess that you people are a very orderly and a very disciplined people corporately. It's quite unusual, especially because Africa as a territory, we seem to not be compliant. How you people got to this state is worthy of commendation. But there is a sense of dexterity, obedience. I saw cars waiting for cars. I saw cars waiting for pedestrians. And it was as though you are not in this nation. Now, the reason is because there is a modus operandi. Are we together now? The territory came under the influence of a modus operandi. And for as long as you subscribe to it, it produced an ideology that is now benefiting all and sundry. Are we together? This is how the gospel is. There is a mind control system that the gospel should carry that should make everyone within that territory and then the territory itself to come to the obedience of Christ. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Second scripture, 1 Kings 18, 21. 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah came unto the people. Elijah was tired and fed up of their dilly darling. And he came up to the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? He said, If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, then follow him. The Bible says, and the people answered him not a word. When you read all the scriptures, he called for a contest at Mount Carmel, where the prophets of Baal were given an opportunity from morning till night to call upon the name of their Lord, if peradventure he would answer. And they called and caught themselves, 
lacerations everywhere and yet he would not answer and the bible says when it was a time for the evening sacrifice elijah haven't put a sacrifice upon the altar set up 12 stones he called upon the god of heaven and he came down answering by fire licked up the water and that day the god of the bible the god of the hebrews enthroned himself again as lord of lords hallelujah there are a few principles, six of them, very quickly, I may not be teaching, I'll just mention them and say a word on them because I'm hoping and praying that one day, some young man, some young woman will stumble across this message when they are studying what is the prophetic blueprint of God for Bonnie Island and that by the Spirit they will come across this message and listen to it and say, oh, this is a key and a roadmap to what God intends to do and how revivals will be transformed. There are six keys that I've learned from my life, from the privilege of uncommon mentorship, the opportunity to have studied revivals. I'm a student of revivals. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people in their lifetime who were mightily used by God across the earth and have studied the references and the books of many. I've studied the revival in Nigeria, I've had the honor and the privilege of listening to people who were mightily used by God or knew others who were used by God in close proximity. And like a spiritual archaeologist, I have been able to piece together six keys that I believe any territory and any individual that works in compliance with these keys, you will always preserve the move of God within that territory. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and grant us understanding. Are you ready? Key number one. You want to preserve the move of God territorially across Boni Island and across your region. The first key is prayer. Key number one is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. You will never be able to preserve the move of God in a territory when there is a shortage of men and women who understand the mystery of warfare and intercession in prayer. When I talk of prayer, the kind of prayer that births revival in a territory is not just prayer for petition and request. There is a dimension of prayer that is responsible, listen carefully, for awakenings. It is the dimension of prayer called prophetic intercession and warfare. There must be people always from different churches across different planes here within this region. There must be an emergence of men and women who understand the art of holding on to the four horns of the altar men and women who know how to lift up the incense of prayer so that the purposes of God will continue and will advance in your region. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. We'll begin our reading from verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, we're reading to 30. Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophecies in the midst thereof. Like the roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made how many widows in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have not put difference between holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. Please continue. Go ahead. 
Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. 28. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies. Unto them saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord has not spoken. 29. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. They have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. 30. We add 31 also. And I sought for them among them that should hedge, should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Next verse. Therefore, because I did not find prophetic intercessors in the land, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Destruction becomes imminent for any territory when there are no prophetic intercessors. Men and women who understand the art of prayer, warfare in the spirit and intercession that the purposes of God be advanced. It says right from the days of John the Baptist and even until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent shall take it by force. Jeremiah 29 and verse 7. Please pay attention. The first key to preserve the awakening of the spirit upon this territory for your children and your children's children is the priesthood ministry of prayer, intercession, warfare. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. When a territory is troubled, the trouble will eventually affect you. That was what Mordecai told Esther. He said, do not think you are in the palace. And because things are glorious in the palace, Haman is plotting to kill us. When he is done with that territory, they will discover you are a Jew. And he will come for you. There needs to be a reimagination of prayer groups, prayer chains, men and women raised by God who know how to pray. The, the price for revival is genuine prayer with fasting, not just people who are saying, Lord, give me tea, give me bread. He wants to bless you, no doubt. But men who can pray, like John Knox who would pray over Scotland, Oh God, give me Scotland or I die. Oh God, give me Scotland or I die. There must be men and women who are selfless. It's not just the issue of I am president of a group. Nameless, faceless people. And I tell you by prophecy, God will begin to raise men you see from among you. Some of them are ordinary people. No name. Ordinary mothers. Every evening you will stand behind a tree. Shake it bakatata. Lord, preserve your walk in Pony Island. This is why God brought some of you here to confirm to you that what you are doing is not in the flesh. There are mothers that will arise. Even in old age, grace will be given to you like Anna the prophetess and you will stand in prayer night and day. Lord, let evil not prevail over the territory. And every time the hand of Satan wants to come, there is a mother, there is a father, there is a young man and woman praying and say, no way, we are the gatekeepers of this territory and we build a spiritual fortification. Evil cannot thrive when we are alive. Listen very carefully. There is a price for the move of God. The price of genuine prayer. When men do not pray, Evil thrives in a territory. When men do not pray, 
occultism thrives in a territory when men do not pray injustice thrives do you know why the bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth he has given to the sons of men so if anything is going wrong in our territory it's a territory is a testament of our mismanagement no matter how technologically advanced we are please hear me there are forces assigned over territories to thwart the purposes of god there are familiar spirits that grow with many and master the patterns they create behavioral patterns that sabotage the destinies of people so you find a territory with widespread irresponsibility you find a territory where the men are irresponsible and it's the women that serve the men. You find a territory where the young people are not respectful. You find a territory with a widespread manifestation of misbehavior and all kinds of things. There are spirits. There must be men and women who must learn how to command power from the realm of the spirit. If you want to see God move in Bonnie Island, follow the path of the great patriarchs bishop samuel ajayit crowder james johnson these people did not start with preaching they started with prayer i had the opportunity to see their pulpits i had the opportunity to see how they called upon the god of heaven and even at the threat of their lives like the three hebrew boys they refused to bow to the forces of the land they commanded some of your kings by the reason of the power they commanded in the heavens. They made some of your kings to accept Jesus openly. Today you are benefactors of that prayer. I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, whatever has brought you down to a point of spiritual coldness, may that fire be fanned aflame tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The move of God will always suffer when people do not pray. When it's time for prayer meetings, carry your children. Don't say they are too young. You will not be here forever. Respectfully speaking, this is the mistake that the West made in the 60s and 70s when the move of God was so strong. Many of the parents were in that revival but they forgot their children. Remember what Pharaoh told Egypt. He said, we'll let you go, but leave your children behind. They said, no way. We are all going. Anything that makes you to neglect your children in carrying them along, one generation of neglect will return Satan back to a territory. Please listen to me tonight. This is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. One generation of neglect 30 days without prayer was all that the parliament in Babylon needed. 30 days without prayer and a house of assembly sat down to pass a decree. All Satan needs is that short a time and he will wreak havoc over a territory. Men and women who know how to pray once it is night you wake up with a sense of responsibility not just give me bread give me tea oh god the other day you gave me five naira when will you increase it to 15 naira there is a place for that but i'm talking of men who would carry the map of bonnie island put it on your prayer altar Shakatos kapata lord revival lord fire lord salvation let the fire of god fall on the streets fall in schools fall everywhere this is how revivals are birthed this is how revivals are preserved you must trust god for grace to conquer gluttony gluttony you must trust God to return back to the old pattern. The ancient art of prayer with fasting. Not prayer while browsing. Not prayer while picking a call. That you turn the plates in your house upside down. And your house becomes an altar. Where angels are used to coming and going. Because they found out that an altar of prayer 
has been built from that place. Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, it's time for a move once again in Bonny Island. Thank God for what we have seen. Thank God for the sacrifices of the fathers and the veterans in the land. Once again, oh God of heaven, arise like the mighty God that you are. Blow in power, blow in power upon Bonny Island. Are you praying? Shake it back at a paracos. Embracatecos Catalecatech. Rakata Branta Catosca Paca Popras Cotosh. Embracotos Cotoparenta Catabrascata. Pray, don't be tired. You're here for a conference tonight. Shkadabalakatai. Lord, let there be a restoration of apostolic signs, apostolic wonders. Do again, oh God, what you did before. Heal again, oh God, the way you healed before. Deliver again, oh God, the way you delivered before. Change again, oh God, the way you changed before. We are available vessels. We will give you no rest until you establish Jerusalem as a prayer. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. Alabaratas kadabaratya. One more time. The covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Please hear me. Listen to me. Listen. I challenge every family here. Turn your house into a prayer altar. There has to be a space for a divine visitation in your house. As a father, as a mother, let your children know prayer by watching you pray. Not by learning it in Sunday school. Let them learn prayer from you. That whilst they are sleeping in the middle of the night, they hear daddy taking away the cloak of CEO. Taking away the cloak of a professional. Wear your priestly regalia. Walk from room to room. Laying hands on the children. Oh, you will be part of the move of God. You will be part of the fire of God. Mateka Paruskiata. Lay hands on them. Making decrees. Prophesying upon the land.